How do we make the diagnosis? Is there a type of testing that you do, and what is that type of testing? Well, we start with good old history and physical. And one other caveat, about a fourth of all frontotemporal dementia cases are in those age 65 to 90. So it can affect all ages. So the first thing is to remember to think it, since it's about one in 10 of all primary neurodegenerative dementias. And I see a lot of people that are over the age of 65, and I've always thought it was like hardening of the arteries up in the brain that's causing the problems. It's more than that. Yes, and to make a diagnosis, we can also do cognitive testing or neuropsychiatric testing. So cognitive testing, that's thinking testing? Absolutely, so, so in like? frontotemporal dementia, some of the things that we are looking for are changes in executive function or decision making or verbal fluency, language skills. So we test the language areas of the left frontal as well as the left temporal lobe. And so those are the categories or phonetic fluency parts of the brain. So basically to say you start losing your words in frontal temporal dementia, the memory is relatively okay. So short term memory is intact. And then the other things that are okay are visual spatial tests. Now what does that mean, visual spatial? For instance, we might have someone draw a clock with all the hands and numbers, and in frontotemporal dementia, it's usually okay. In Alzheimer's disease, not so much, and in some of the other dementias that affect visual spatial areas, sometimes it's also abnormal. So if something's abnormal and you wanted them to draw a clock, what would they be drawing? What would what would be the abnormality? We're looking for changes in the hand placement or the number placement. But in FTD, sometimes that's affected, but not because they can't see it properly, because there's a problem with attention. Remember, this is the attention part of the brain. Some of our patients can't focus and pay attention to the task. So if you were to tell me, put the clock at four o'clock, I'd say, sure, and I'd, and I'd start thinking about and I just couldn't perform it. I just couldn't, couldn't put it at four o'clock. So when you see something like that, when you begin to have cognitive testing, thinking testing, where do you go from there? So at our clinic, we also recommend doing imaging. So there are different types of images, things like MRIs and CAT scans, which tell us what the brain looks like, that tells us the anatomy of the brain. but. Can they, you see that on a, an X-ray, an MRI, can, a yes, CAT scan? And we're looking for focal or specific areas of shrinkage. Like what? Like that frontal lobe. So if that's shrinking and the other person's not shrinking, then you know there's something going on and you correlate that with the cognitive testing? Absolutely. You correlate it with the cognitive testing and the history, back to your plain wow. old history and physical. Sometimes there can be movement changes. Sometimes frontotemporal dementia is first thought before it's realized to be a Parkinson's or Parkinson's-like disorder. So it can masquerade as a lot of other things. How can you take the masquerade of all the things and drop the little diagnosis or know exactly where you are? To, to me, this is so exciting and things are happening that we've got a diagnosis in the future and maybe medications in the future. So how do you figure it out? There are other images that we can do at, like a PET scan. P now a PET scan is, is entirely different. To me it's, it's the ultimate in finding out what's going on in the brain. Is it's one right? of the ultimates. There are still uh -huh. other tests but a sugar or FDG PET scan. So there are different types of PET scans. There's one that looks at how your brain uses sugar, and that tells us how your brain works. There are other PET scans that actually mark the abnormal proteins, and that's what's coming wow. down the pipeline, and that's probably going to be one of the best tests because we can't take a big chunk of brain, and we certainly want, do not want to do an autopsy. So. This so is you, a great way of looking at it. So you can use this x-ray machine, this PET scan, to find out the different proteins that are causing different problems in different parts of the brain. 